All right, guys, welcome back to another Minecraft video, and today I'm joined by Il Mango. Hi, man. Hi. Make sure to check out his channel, it's linked in the video description, a lot of crazy redstone contraptions. And yeah, today we got together because of a tweet by Jeb, where he announced he would want to work on something in Minecraft um, that could be tricky for the redstone community. Um, and it is the so-called observer block. He, yeah, that's a work in progress name, right? Observer block. And what would that thing do? Well, it would be a replacement for um, butt pistons. So, back in 2013, they mentioned something, right? Yeah, uh, I heard that at Minecon they said they would, at some point, uh, if they would introduce a block detector block, they would think about their decision to decide that quasi-connectivity is an intended future and maybe replace it with the new block. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's the issue that quasi-connectivity uh, has to be separated really from block update detectors. So block detectors are just one application of the whole thing and uh, yeah, the dedicated block wouldn't be a replacement really. Yeah, so we have set up a few different bots here, the basic bots that are used by the community quite a huge variety by now. For example, here we have one that uses um, a cauldron. So if you apply a block update here, you can see it updates. Or what else do we have? Um, a very old school one here. I think this design was once shown by Sespling back in the days. Then here is one with slime blocks that is very widespread now. I think that pretty much became the standard but design now. I think most people are using that in their builds or I've seen it quite a lot and I personally also use this one quite often. Simple with the slime block here. And what else do we got? Yeah, maybe something a bit more outlandish. This one, um, that is pretty cool. Um, that is, um, yeah, working with the um, hopper here. Um, as soon as uh, you update the hopper, items would get drained if you redirect the redstone here that's pretty interesting so you see the redstone gets redirected to the um, track here and yeah let's say um, we have a few items here in the hopper and now I update it and you can see the items start flowing towards this chest I've never seen this one before um, Il Mango just showed me this that's pretty cool but that's why he's the right man to be here because he knows a lot way more than I do about redstone and things and yeah flying machines obviously also based on that, but maybe we can uh, quickly talk about the quasi-connectivity and try to show what it does, right? Okay, so from all of those parts, only uh, one we showed used the quasi-connectivity, the one of the slime block. Yep. But the other ones didn't use that feature. And yeah, the quasi-connectivity that powers a block indirectly, um, you yeah, could stumble upon it if you try to power something with a torch, for example. Uh, torch would only power the top one directly. But the low one is also yeah, powered by the quasi-connectivity. Yeah, and it, yeah, pretty much an update happens, you know. You see the redstone torch directly powering the top one. Um, but as it is budded, so to speak, or quasi-connected, um, when the top piston moves, the other one gets activated too. And that is used in quite a lot of things. Right here, for example, you know, if you think about doors, that wouldn't be possible without quasi-connectivity. Or this, you know, with the repeater. I mean, you know, it's not directly connected, but yeah, it's a block update. All that here with the half slab. I mean, yeah, yeah, this would be also useful if you want something to, for example, next to the slab that isn't powered. Yeah. Um, yeah if you, if there wouldn't be quasi connectivity, then the slab wouldn't power the lower piston. So yeah. yeah. Or um, it's used here in piston walls. That is something Il Mango, for example, person he's working a lot with. He made a ton of really cool tree farms, and this is how people wire piston doors nowadays. You know, and yeah, it's the same situation we had over there. Only those pistons up here are directly powered. The next row isn't, but due to the quasi connectivity, then gets updated. So there's more examples where it is used. For example, here in silent dropper elevators um, setups like these i mean those things move up items silently and are a nice alternative to slime block glass elevators and yeah um, without quasi connectivity that wouldn't work 
Um, also, um, right here, and it's a nice example, the manga was set up. It's a triple piston extender. Maybe you can explain a bit more what's going on here with the quasi-connectivity. Yeah, so ju you just have more options to power something. If you would could only power it directly, then you would have uh, yeah, just redstone dust everywhere on the top and they would connect. But by splitting the lines up, which is possible this way, I can power triple piston extender, for example, just from the top. Yeah. I mean, obviously, so it would need more while riding here to make it fully automatic, but I think you yep. get the idea. And yeah, without quasi-connectivity, this would also not be possible. So um, here we have one thing that lately became pretty big in the Minecraft Redstone community as well. Um, it is the one-tick pulses and chaining um, yeah, pistons pretty much and maybe you can explain a bit what's happening here. Yeah, maybe let's start off the other example first. Yeah. So we use a technique we are commonly referred to as piston chaining and this is a basic zero-tick pulse generator. Zero-ticks mean that we power and depower a sticky piston in the same game tick and this causes it, the block to teleport to the new position within uh, a single game tick and it's quite useful to make things faster. And this contraption here uses the uh, quasi-connectivity your chain piston updates. So first what would happen, you power the piston of the iron block first, then the redstone line, which is at the moment powered by the redstone block at the bottom, co can connect to the other line, power this piston. And then here with the quasi-connectivity, the one of the redstone block isn't powered directly. So we have an update chain. First the one is powered directly with update, the then the one below is updated, and the then the third one. And so in this way we can yeah, we have enough time to power and depower something and that's yeah, basically the piston chaining which is super useful for zero tech stuff yeah and here this is um kind of the same principle yeah uh, so this uh, also a zero tick generator it uses the principle that comparators update after repeaters so uh, now the zero tick pulse was too short and only the, the yeah, top one uh, would activate. But there's a nice workaround that uses quasi-connectivity. If I use, uh, again, uh, piston chaining, then I can make it work for both pistons. There you go. So this is some not, you know, there's even more applications for quasi-connectivity. And it would be great because I was talking to the guys of Mojang and you know who are working on these uh, features and yeah you can also tweet at them I will give you the information in the video description um, if you want to help improve uh, the development because they are really welcoming to feedback by the community Jab tweeted back at me feel free to send feedback our way and yeah this um, yeah here's a flying machine it's also based on the quasi connectivity um, because you can see, you know, blocks are diagonal from pistons and update each other. That's a simple example. And um, I think Cubehamster, for example, is a guy that can go way more crazy with that stuff. So, yeah, we just want to make sure that if um, there is a block, the observer block, that would pretty much, yeah, replace things like that. It would help, you know, I'm totally welcoming to that change, right? It would be cool if we had a single block that could do pretty much what this thing does. It would yeah, as long as it's added on top of the existing features, it would be perfectly fine with it. Yeah, it would be great and it would definitely improve possibilities with Redstone, make things more compact. And so yeah, that's definitely a good thing. But um, we want to remind the developers not to forget about the quasi-connectivity and its usefulness for, for many contraptions. Um, in Minecraft redstoning right now and yeah if you have good examples feel free to reply here on the comments or of course um, tweet tweet at me and I will pass it on and so on and yeah I'm in direct contact with the dev team working on that with Daniel and um, yeah we should be able to have a nice cool redstone feature for the future I wonder what the crafting recipe would be for that observer block hmm. they can't make it too expensive maybe spider eyes you know Spider eyes, some redstone, some cobblestone, and that would be something. Yeah, speculations. So yeah, that's a little advertisement video for quasi connectivity, and yeah, I hope you liked it. Is there anything else you would like to add in Mango? No, I think uh, I got my point across. <laughs> yeah, we got it all. And thanks for watching, my friends. As I said, make sure to check out the Mango. Does crazy cool stuff with redstone farms and everything you think about. 
And that's it for today. We are out. I'm looking forward to the discussion in the comment section. We always want to remind you, stay positive, guys. You know, it's important. Um, the development team does their best to improve the game for us, squish bugs, you know, get rid of bugs, have consistency and make it more approachable for new players because obviously this whole quasi-connectivity and bad uh, stuff is not easy for players that just get into Minecraft. So there's no need to rage. It's important to support the community and their listening. Um, or, yeah, show support from the community. They're listening to us. Very important. So yeah, that's all I had to say. Looking forward to see you soon in the next video. We are out. Bye, guys. Bye.